Hey guys, this is Sean with the Steam Moto. I'm getting really close to finishing up my electric Honda build. If you haven't been following along, I used an Electroco and Company electric kit, uh, the battery, controller, and motor. And I found this donor Honda CRF frame off Facebook Marketplace. So other, aside from some cosmetic things, I'm about ready to call this thing finished. Now I'm starting to think about my next build already and I either want to build a two-stroke because I've never built a two-stroke before or you know do some restoration or I want to build another electric bike but I'd probably go with an electric pit bike or maybe a smaller frame just so my wife can ride but starting to think about my next build I've thought about three things that I'd probably reconsider going into my next build and I think these are things that maybe you might want to consider if you're going to go electric so number one I would probably find a better frame. Now, not, I'm not saying the Honda CR frame is a bad frame. I'm just saying the one that I bought looked really good when I went and picked it up. But as I got it home, I started taking it apart. I found that basically every bearing was shot. Every seal was shot. The suspension, uh, you know, fit, sitting, on it, sitting on it in the parking lot, it felt fine. But once I got it home and started riding it, the rear shock is gone. The forks probably just need rebuilt. Um, and then you start going even further the brakes the brake rotors were warped the rear brake shoe was actually outside of the caliper it was just hanging dangling so there's been a few surprises that i found once i got the bike home and took it apart but once i fixed those minor things the frame was actually in pretty good shape um, but the other thing i would reconsider is using a steel frame and the reason for that is simply because i can't weld on aluminum so putting this all together i had to uh, I just built everything out of steel brackets, which added a lot of weight. And it'd been really nice if I could have just welded mounting tabs for the motors and brackets where I wanted. Now, with that said, the new aluminum frames where the perimeter frames do allow for a larger battery and it's easier to take the battery in and out of the top. A steel frame, they have this spine going down the back. You won't be able to lift the battery out. You'll have to do a different configuration. But there's some pros and cons with both ways. I would just consider looking at a better frame that's in better condition when I restart. Now, number two, this build took me around probably 10 to 11 months. Um, and that was largely because one, I didn't have a lot of time to come out here and work on it each day. I'd come out a few minutes here, a few minutes there. The other thing was I wanted to build all the mounting brackets by scratch. I wanted to weld, learn to weld, uh, and, and say I did basically everything, which I did. So I bought a welder off Amazon, links in the uh, subscription below. I bought a very simple one. Um, went and bought steel from Lowe's and Home Depot, brought it back, started cutting it up, and I made it work. I made the motor brackets from scratch. Now, moving forward, if I was gonna build another build, this one took me about 10 months. Now knowing what I know now, I could build another in probably 10 hours. And one thing that I would do is I would go ahead and buy pre-made motor mounts from somebody like Lithium King. I'll add a link down below for that. Uh, that already comes with motor mounts specifically for this motor that actually mounts to the swing arm bolt in the rear. Now I hand fabricated all that. I broke a lot of welds. Uh, I scrapped a lot of metal. And that was part of the process that I wanted to do. But moving forward, if I just wanted to get it done, I would go with the pre-made motor brackets. Now you still have to mount your battery and your controller, but that's at least quite a bit less work that you gotta do. And the other big thing is those motor brackets will actually align your sprocket, which is extremely important to get your sprocket, the height correct, the distance from the swing arm correct, and get it aligned correctly to where your chain is in a straight parallel path to your rear sprocket. So that's what I would do there. And number three, this kind of goes back to the frame issue, but I would buy a bigger battery. So I put a 40 amp hour battery in this frame, but knowing now how much space is above the battery, I could have got a larger battery that was just simply taller and probably got another 10 to 20 amp hours out of it. So with the perimeter frame of these aluminum frames where they swell open, you can drop a, fr a battery directly down into it. Well, I cut the top of the motor off, which you can see in some old videos, which dropped my battery down about two inches. Well, that gives me another two inches above the battery where it sits today. So I could have went with a bigger battery. It would have cost more, but you would have got 
quite a bit more uh, ride time and certain batteries that are a little bit bigger have a little bit more output amperage so you could have a little bit more power if your controller can, can handle it. So otherwise I think this build's been awesome. It's fun to ride in the yard. It's extremely torquey. I got on this and then got on my 350 right after and played around with it and the torque characteristics are just so different it's hard to compare but it's silent. I can ride this in my yard. The neighbors don't complain. Um, you know, I, I can pull up and stop and talk, have a conversation, casually take off, and truly I can almost have a conversation while we're riding because it's so quiet. And that's what I love. But it still has that big size bike grunt and torque down low, especially at low speeds. It'd be great for going and doing enduro riding. Um, probably large motocross tracks, probably wouldn't be the best. Uh, you're probably going to run out of that top end speed on really large tracks, but arena cross, you know, smaller outdoor tracks would be perfect. But otherwise, I highly recommend this. This is total, I probably have less than $4,000 into this build. And I hand did it myself and I really enjoyed the build. So I highly encourage you to do the same if you can. Uh, now, moving on to my next build, I really want to build either a two-stroke or a smaller bike, so I'm going to try to find something on Facebook Marketplace to build. I've never ridden a 250 two-stroke, so I think that's going to be my goal. Get something like that and uh, refurbish it, bring it back to life, and have a, have a two-stroke bike to ride. So, thanks for following along. We'll get some more videos up here soon, hopefully some riding comparisons, and uh, let you guys see how that pans out. So thank you all for watching. See you next time.